Hi friends, today I am here with my good friend Anne Molesky and we are talking about specific um, teaching processes and activities and skill development um, that we can all implement into our very next teaching situation, even if that situation is tomorrow. Today we are talking about um, one of the comparatives that we work on in the younger grades or whenever students are starting their kind of formal experience in a classroom music setting, and that is fast and slow. Now, Anne, you are the kindergarten music queen. You are the early childhood music queen. So talk to me. What do we need to know about fast and slow? Yeah, so one thing to know about all comparatives is that um, we're learning what something is by what it is not, which is why we get into like the whole opposite game, right? So we're learning through discrimination, which is why using the ER um, suffix, right, is important when we talk about fast versus slow. We're really talking about faster versus slower because we're comparing the two. And that's an important point for teacher talk and not so much for kids, right? Because they'll mm. hear something that's faster than what they heard before and they'll say, oh, that's fast and we don't need to correct them and be like, actually, it's faster. Like, we don't need to get into that. Just for our own purposes, we need to know that we're, we're doing it from a, a comparison basis, right? Mm. Um, so, so I think that's an important point. Um, faster versus slower obviously has different tempi um, considerations. You know, mm -hmm. if we're thinking about comparatives, we're thinking about foundational aspects in early childhood music. We're thinking about things that are giving us the broad foundation that we're going to need to get more refined over time. So fast versus slower, faster versus slower mm -hmm. really has to do with tempo, but also um, duration as well, I think, right? Because if we have like a ticka ticka versus a ta, yes, we're talking about shorter versus longer, which is a different mm -hmm. podcast episode, but kids also hear that as faster versus slower because it is, right? Because of the duration. So yes. um, I think that is a, an important consideration. So this is just a broad um, foundational thing that is really, really important. So yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. So today we're talking about how we can take a song and stretch it out or squish it together. Like if we were to write our steady beat hearts on the board, how, um, how far are they extended away from each other? And then how close can we squish them together? And, and that kind of comparison is so good for young students to do, right? How does it feel for a steady beat in my body to be kind of elongated through space versus um, still being a steady beat, still being the same distance between each pulse, but that distance we can squish together or we can kind of pull apart. Um, you're writing something down. Do you want me to go to my example or do you want to yes and something before that? I, no, I just, I was writing that down because I don't think I've ever physically squished heartbeats together or pulled them apart in my classroom. And I want to remember that because that's very smart, which is why you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> or why I'm friends with you, I should say. Okay, go ahead. Why we are friends, why we're good music <laughs> colleagues. All right. Um, okay. So Anne, um, it is cold where you are, right? Yes, not okay. as cold as it was, but yes, 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 yes. Okay. It is not cold where I am. Um, do you remember yesterday we were in some, not yesterday, but last episode, we were in um, some of the Nordic countries where it was very cold. Let's stay there because I was having fun. And um, in Nordic countries, much like kids here in America, they will have lullabies to put them to sleep. So let's imagine, can you, um, all across the room, kindergartners are closing their eyes and they're imagining all of the snow, it's like quiet on the ground and like maybe the moon is out. Good. Now will you open your eyes with me and let's rock our baby to sleep. And you're going to listen to my lullaby. Here we go. Sula, rula, sula, rula, sula, rula, laia. Sula, rula, sula, rula, sula, rula, laia. Sula, rula, sula, rula, sula, rula, laia. Okay, so that's our first experience, like this really beautiful lullaby from Norway. And we can look at Norway on a map and talk about what the weather is like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so after a while, students know this song. Um, and can I tell you something? Um, in the uh, Nordic countries, they have lots of animals, just like we have lots of animals here. And one of my favorite animals is an Arctic 
fox. And did you know something? That arctic fox can go so fast. Will you turn your fingers into arctic foxes and move it all around? Oh, very nice. And maybe it's going to move like with two paws at a time. Oh, that would be so fast. Will you please turn your fingers into your arctic fox now as we sing our song? Or in this case, you would probably be listening to our song first. It would go, Do you want to know what other kind of animal they have up in the Nordic countries? They have walruses. And when they are underground, excuse me, when they are in the water, walruses can actually move pretty fast. But on land, most of the time, they are slow. So you turn your hand into your walrus and let me see your tusks oh yeah now will you make your yeah that's exactly it and that's what and that's what they'll do <laughs> um now will you uh friends who are listening and not watching Anne took her tusks and just like a perfect kindergarten boy she just put them underneath her nose like that yes and then of course like if if everybody's doing that then we'll take a moment and go like wah, wah. oh yeah like oh if can, you aren't watching the video you need to just for that <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so now will you make your walrus? He's so slow. Okay, here we go. Sula, rula, sula, rula, sula, rula, laia. You get the idea. Okay, so now let's end by rocking our baby back to sleep. Here we go. Sula rula, sula rula, sula rula laia. Good, and that's where we will pause right there. So um, the progression here is just the song on its own, the song talking about where it's from and what it's like and what the weather is like and how kids there have many of the same experiences that kids here in uh, North America have. And then we go to some exploration of fast versus slow uh, based on some different animals that we might find in this setting. And then um, when I took level one, I took it with uh, Karen Shuford, and she was a big, um, she really pushed the idea of you do fast and then you do slow or faster or slower, but then you end with the song in its original context. Mm -hmm. And that was something that um, I definitely appreciate about, about her perspective there. So you stick it back into the tempo that you want students to have in their minds. Okay, that's Sula Rula. Oh, and sorry, yeah, I should I say, that. sorry, oh, um, sourced from nordicsounds.info, which was the same place from last episode. Okay. Which is your favorite website ever. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I love that. So I I love, first of all, lullabies are like the classic, like we generally tend to begin with those because it's nice, like a nice way to end class. Mm -hmm. Everyone can have like their own like little breathing buddy, um, as my little girl's kindergarten teacher calls them, right? And they can rock their breathing buddy, like their little stuffed animal to, to sleep. And um, so we always have that kind of feel with a lullaby. Like kids can grasp that, like slow mm -hmm. and quiet lullabies are kind of our go-to. I love the way that you manipulated it based off the song best word but yeah. you know what I'm trying to uh yep. differentiated it maybe that's a better word <laughs> um based on like different animals um different ideas that kids would have because you know this would be a, a bigger conversation because kids would have ideas about yes. what animals they could do next right and so that there would be a lot of interaction that way mm -hmm. um, a lot of input from the kids and so like different variations of not just tempo, but also like movement that they're doing. It could turn into a locomotor movement, like lots of fun stuff, right? Love it. It's yes. Great. Yes, absolutely. Okay, what do you have? Cool. All right, so let's get out of the cold and let's go to a summertime. Now, when I was growing up, I um, I had two different homes, like two different childhood homes. Um, we lived in one house like the first half of my childhood and moved to a different one. But the first one, that's not important to the story, the first one was like a couple of blocks from our like Main Street in the very small town I grew up in um, in Michigan. So um, a couple blocks from Main Street. And in the summertime, there were lots and lots of parades, right? Lots of parades, lots of things. Um, you know, there's always a Memorial Day parade. There's other stuff going on. And I just remember every time there was a parade, my dad had to leave early because he was our high school marching band director. And so he would go like meet all the high school kids, like all two hundred of them or whatever and like round them up to go march in the parade and so my mom would have all three kids and it was very very difficult for her to like wrangle all the kids so what did she do she put us in our wagon and we had one of those wagons that was like 
the the wooden bottom I feel like everybody had this like in the 80s and 90s <laughs> the wooden <laughs> bottom with like the with like the red fence mm-hmm. that you, like you could take off all four sides right it could be a flatbed or whatever and oh man that little red wagon was so fun true story perfect segue but true story um but it was really really rickety and the sidewalks in my hometown were very old <laughs> and so I remember like riding a lawn and it was very very bumpy and so you would bump up and down in, in your a little, little red, red wagon. wagon yeah you're welcome for that and it would sound like this bumping up and down in my little red wagon bumping up and down in my little red wagon bumping up and down in my little red wagon won't you be my darling right um and then sometimes the wagon would get a little a little rickety because it was old I think my mom might have gotten it at a yard sale actually or we got it like hand, hand me down from like an aunt or uncle or something so one wheel would would fall off but she still had to get all three of these kids at the parade so she would still pull us right along and one wheel wheel was off in the wagon's dragon. One wheel's off in the wagon's dragon. One wheel's off in the wagon's dragon. Won't you be my darling? Ah, and then another wheel fell off. Oh my goodness. So it's really, really, really dragon. The other wheel's off in the wagon's dragon. The other wheel's off in the wagon's dragon. The other wheel's off in the wagon's dragon. Won't you be my darling? And at this point, like, the parade's going to start in, like, five minutes. Dad's, like, heading up the band. Like, we got to get there. So Marianne, <laughs> I should make her listen to this episode. <laughs> Marianne just busts out her hammer, and she's going to fix that wagon. So she takes her hammer mom my and I don't call her Marianne because she's my mom so mom mommy's gonna fix it with her hammer mommy's gonna fix it with her hammer mommy's gonna fix it with her hammer won't you be my darling and y'all we're late so we gotta get to this parade here we go bumping up and down in my little red wagon bumping up and down in my little red wagon bumping up and down in my little red wagon won't you be my darling yeah so that's how I introduced the song and thank you. Um, that's how I introduced the song. Um, and then we play the game. So we tell the story again. This time, I won't sing it all for you again. Um, this time we start in a wagon wheel formation, which of course is a circle. And we move around and we follow the motions. What I like about singing this song this way is we start out in just like a comfortable tempo. Um, then we slow down a little bit. We slow down a little bit more. Then we have to fix it. So we have that cello rondo. So we have that really strong comparative mm-hmm. throughout. Um, so as is, I think that's a great way to explore all of faster versus slower. Um, but of course, we can always go and do more things, right? So um, something that I like to do is, Victoria, I don't have a hammer. So what should we fix your wagon with today? What else could we fix a wagon with, do you think? And this could be tricky depending on on your kids. You might want to have like a bank of things or some pictures of some things. Um, but we're going to put V on the spot today. <laughs> um, I would fix it with a rock. If I didn't have a hammer, I would just pick up a, a rock that I found on the Oh, ground. so you're, so you're going to use the same motion this yeah. time? Okay, so Victoria's going to fix it with the rock. Okay, or maybe um Tommy's going to fix it with the screwdriver, Tommy, or something. Um, Mary's decided to paint it blue. I don't know, like all of these different ideas that we mm-hmm. could do to our wagon, right? Um, Something else that you can do is instead of bumping up and down, maybe we want to skip alongside of our wagon. Maybe we want to run next to the dragon wagon because we couldn't fix it. I don't know. Like you could go whole hog with this story, right? Um, The other thing you could do... <clears throat> pardon me, is instead of just having a circle formation, turn it into a broken circle. And so there's kind of a follow the leader type thing and ask somebody, you know, how fast or slow is your wagon moving today? Can you show me? Um, Either with like that hammer motion or just moving around the room like, okay, we're going to move that way. Um, Bumping up and down in Victoria's wagon, bumping up and down in Victoria's wagon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of different ways that you can creatively like use the story or not to Mm -hmm. kind of extend it different ways. But yeah, that is my like one of my favorite things to do in in kindergarten and beyond because they ask for it um I don't have a source for it I learned it growing up I feel like it's everywhere so yep there it is (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. okay um setting it in the context of the story makes it absolutely magical I love everything (laughs) about that because then to your point you've already written all of the extensions 
right? Because, um, you know, we're, we're walking and it's slow and then we have to go fast and we have to fix it. And there are all of those extensions of like all the different ways that we could fix it. And then all the things, you know, my brother decided that he wanted to jump alongside the wagon. He was tired <laughs> of sitting in it. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, who did we meet coming down the street? Like also on their way to the parade it was, and it was like a dog. It was a, like, you know, a fast little dog and, or it was like a really big, slow, old dog or, you know, whatever. Um, and then it was like, oh, it's, it's your, it's your grandma, it's your abuela that was coming down the road as well. So like, she had to walk kind of slow, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you've already written all of these extensions into it because you're setting it in the context of the story and students can take part in that. Now, let me ask you something, Anne, because in the vein yeah. of teaching this tomorrow, yeah. This is a very simple activity, but it's also a very advanced activity because you are talking about a lot of student input and a lot of student input with different tempi, which means like different mm -hmm. speeds that we are either moving in place or moving around the room, right? Like you've, you've talked us through a lot of possible extensions. Talk me through some of the parameters, like again, in the vein of teaching this tomorrow, yeah what because because i can imagine like um let's we'll, we'll just take me like i can imagine me walking into a classroom of of six-year-olds and being like everyone let's all bump up and down on a little red wagon in a circle right which means let's all bang our heads into the person in front of us and like trip <laughs> and fall right so so help me help me out yeah so first of all this is not a first fast and slow experience for my kids right yeah so um like any other concept, I think we hear some of these comparative early childhood foundational concepts and think like, oh, these are really, really simple. But to your point, there's a lot of nuance there. Mm -hmm. And for kids who haven't had a whole lot of musical experiences, period, let alone in their bodies, it yeah. can be a lot, right? Because you're not just like, again, to your point, like you're dealing with a lot of shared space, self-space mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then you add in the the addition of like different tempo. It's like, okay, whoa right yeah so this is not a first experience if it if I would say mm -hmm. that most often we want to emphasize slower first so I would make sure that an activity like what what you shared today mm -hmm. would be one of the earlier experiences for my kids something with a lullaby because slower is harder for kids because their little heartbeats are just moving so darn fast and they want to go fast all the time no matter what right um but the first, so if you wanted to introduce this tomorrow, if you've already done a little bit of faster and slower, I would just have them sit in place and listen to the story and they can bump and move sitting on their sit spot or whatever it is in your classroom. And then maybe the next time, if you've already done something like rain around the rosy in your class or mm -hmm. similar in a circle formation, because that's really hard for kids, yep. um, especially kindergartners, um, then you could move it that way. Or you could do it in free space, but again, that is another one of those things where it's like they're just going to run into each other something that could help if you're doing it in like like a scattered formation free space excuse me or even in a circle is you could get like hula hoops and that could be everybody's oh, yeah. individual wagons right like so you could do that and then like they know that's their their safe space <laughs> their their wagon um and then you can avoid some of that collision mm -hmm. um but yeah but i think the take home is like this is not necessarily the first experience because there is that variation and there is a lot that you could add to it. Mm -hmm. But if you do want to teach it tomorrow, I would start with just a story with non-locomotor movement. Yeah, that's great. And just to yes and some of the stuff that you're talking about in terms of like movement in free space and open space, um, you might decide that everyone is in a wagon sitting down, but maybe mm -hmm. you have like three friends who you've chosen, who you have chosen to be moving around while everyone else is seated. And then those three, after that song is done, they come and they pick their replacement. So you're just moving like three mm -hmm. people outside the wagon at a time. It's not... Um, it's, it's like a, a scaffold up from everyone sitting to yeah. everyone running around the room, smashing into each other, right? Like, and you can kind of cherry pick those first three and then have them cherry pick the next people who are singing, who are showing that they're ready, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, yeah, just to yes and some of those other scaffolds that we can use. There's a lot, there's yeah, a lot do, in this. Yeah. Yeah. And then do like some of those, like just good teacher practices where it's like, oh, wow, look at how Victoria's wagon is moving without touching anything else. Oh, that's mm -hmm. such a safe way to move our wagon. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that type of thing. So, yep. um, yeah, no, it's great. Super fun. 
Okay, so wrapping up, we've talked about a lot. There's a lot to talk about with fast and slow. <laughs> um, we've talked about um, fast and slow, how it lives in our bodies first, and how starting something slow really helps students control their body through space, which is a huge skill for them to learn at this young age. Um, anything else like takeaway implementation kind of things? Yeah, I think just, um, I think what you said is key, like a big a big component of this is the movement component, mm. right? So I think the, the things that you shared where we can have some of that variation sitting down and it still feels new, even though they're not able to move around. Like mm -hmm. the, the activity I shared will turn into con controlled chaos, right? At some point or another, like yeah. if you, if you go all the way through, which is just kind of how it rolls. Definitely. But I think again, to your point, thinking about how you're going to carefully sequence it, like mm -hmm. starting, start, start with this faster versus slower idea. Like, in self space in a non locomotor movement before you kind of open it wide open. Think about those first steps and then the next accessible chunk. So Great. hopefully we've done some of those things. Yeah. 